Did you know we are hardwired to set the wrong goals and focus on the wrong things? It's true. We have certain biases that make us think if we work on one thing, we'll be happy. And then we get there and realize, oh, that didn't make us happy at all. That's why many of us can check the box and say, check, check, check. Yep, I accomplished all that I said I wanted to accomplish. And yet we still lack a sense of well-being. And that's one of the arguments that Lori Santos presents in her Yale University course called The Science of Well-Being. And they actually offer this course for free through Coursera. And I took it recently and highly recommend it. And I want to focus on some of the core arguments she makes in the very beginning of the course in terms of how to focus what goals to set. And so she goes through our biases, these natural, like these ways in which we're hardwired, these fallacies that we all have in order to help us focus on the wrong, the right things. So what are these biases? Well, one of them is our assumption that knowledge is enough, that if we just know what we're supposed to do, we'll do it. It's just not the case. That's not how it works. The next one is what's called miswanting, meaning we think something will make us happy and therefore we want it. We think it'll make us satisfied or feel good. And then what happens is we've really overestimated it. And when we get there, when we achieve it, we realize, oh, that didn't really change anything for me at all. That's called miswanting. The third thing is that we tend to have really bad reference points. Instead of comparing ourselves to ourselves, we compare ourselves to others, to media, to what we see on TV, and it really makes us feel pretty miserable when we look at our own lives. The fourth thing is what's called hedonic adaptation, which means over time we adapt to what's going on around us or what we've accomplished. So we might move into a new home or get a new job or go to a great university and it feels great at first and then just over time that fades. We grow accustomed to it. It doesn't really have the lasting impact that we think it will. And the last thing is what's called impact bias, meaning we overestimate both positively and negatively how something will affect us. And that's because, like I said before, over time we adjust, we go back to where we were before. So what do we do about this? How can we put this to use to boost our well-being? Well, the first thing is that we need to start, start by setting the right goals. And we need to focus on changing our habits that are that, you know, knowing that this is practice, it's going to take a little bit of time. We're not naturally hardwired to improve our well-being, to work on these sorts of things. And so we have to focus on developing new habits. The second thing is to be incredibly intentional. Instead of focusing on accomplishments or possessions, we have to be intentional about the experiences that we seek out, knowing that those are much more likely to boost our well being. The third thing is to, you know, set goals that you can measure in terms of your own progress. So look at where you are now versus where you were a year ago or five years ago. Don't compare yourself to other people. And in particular, you know, try to control your media consumption and the social comparison that happens within social media settings. The fourth thing is to reflect on your progress and successes. It's really important to revisit that, to remind yourself of how far you've come when it comes to goal setting and behavior change so that you're not comparing yourself to someone else, but you're also not just, you know, developing that adaptation. You're remembering how far you've come, how different things are for you. And then the last thing is to define what's awesome for you. So we're not talking about for other people, but what in your life would be really awesome if you could do it? And it's about these experiences, not accomplishments. So it's not about setting an accomplishment related to your career or your home or your salary, but instead, what would feel awesome to you? Focus on those types of goals and you are sure to boost your well being. There are some specific tools and techniques that we can use that I will uh, discuss in my next post. But until then, start thinking about what goals do you want to set for yourself? How can you monitor and measure them in ways in which you build on your successes rather get than you know, compare yourself to others? And how can you overcome these biases in your own life? It doesn't have to be complicated. These are simple things we can do to improve our well-being.
well-being, to decrease our stress, and to feel better. For more simple science-based solutions for a calmer, healthier life, consider signing up for Take 5. It's my monthly newsletter where I share these types of tools and tips.